Royal News, King Charles and Queen Camilla, completely shocked and horrified by knife attack in Sydney King Charles and Queen Camilla said they were deeply shocked and horrified by the knife attack at a Sydney shopping centre. Her statement follows today's statement from the Prince and Princess of Wales praising the heroic emergency services. Rescue workers rushed to the scene of an accident in the Australian city at 3.30 p.m. local time on Saturday. A man wearing shorts and a green and yellow shirt was seen holding a knife. One of the victims is a nine-month-old baby undergoing surgery at the hospital. The assailant was also shot dead by a police officer who confronted the assailant and raised a knife. Police do not believe this crime is terrorism-related, but believe the man is known to law enforcement authorities. His wife and I were deeply shocked and horrified to hear of the tragic knife attack in Bondi, the palace said in a statement. Our thoughts are with the families and loved ones of those brutally killed in such a senseless attack, while the details of these shocking circumstances continue to emerge. Our thoughts are with those involved in the response and we thank the first responders and emergency services for their bravery. Kate and William release statement on Sydney stabbing the Prince and Princess of Wales have released a statement regarding the fatal knife attack at a Sydney shopping centre on Saturday. The couple said they were shocked and saddened to hear of the attack that killed six people. The parents of the monster Sydney knife attacker said their son was angry because he couldn't find a girlfriend. The Sydney bomber's parents said they were deeply disappointed and said his son was frustrated at not being able to find a girlfriend. Joel Couch, 40, stalked the busy Westfield Bondi Junction on Saturday with a large knife, killing six people and injuring twelve others, including a nine-month-old baby. After being chased through a shopping mall, he is shot and killed by Inspector Amy Scott, who confronts him alone on the fifth floor. Speaking outside his home on Monday, Andrew Couch said he was deeply sorry for the victims of the attack on his son and said he was heartbroken by their loss. A 76-year-old man said, When I found out that his son suffered from mental illness, I became his son's servant. He is my son and I love monster. To you he is a monster. To me he was a very sick boy. Ta. Couch said his son has a long history of mental illness. He wanted a girlfriend, but he had no social skills and he was completely frustrated, he added. Couch said that when Joel visited his son last year, he took five U.S. military knives from his son because he feared he would be stabbed. The comments came hours after police chiefs said they were investigating whether the attacker may have targeted women. Police Commissioner Karen Webb of New South Wales told the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, It is clear to me and to investigators that the attacker was focused on women and avoided men. According to the Ahmadiyya Islamic Community of Australia, the only person killed in the attack was security guard Faraz Tahir, 30 who arrived in Australia as a refugee from Pakistan last year. The other three women, Yishuan Chen, 27, from China, Jade Young, 47, Don Singleton, 25, Pykleia Dalkia, 55, and Ashley Good, 38, were all women and all victims of Couch's attack. Thousands of flowers and wreaths were laid at a makeshift memorial outside the mall on Monday, and hundreds of people from across the city gathered to mourn the victims. Len Wyatt, who paid his respects at the memorial service, said, It's shocking that something like this could happen so close to home. I'm still trying to get back into my routine, she added. I took today off to get my head back on track. Australian flags will be flown at half-staff across Australia, including at Parliament House and Sydney Harbour Bridge, in the memory of the victims. The Sydney Opera House was lit up with black ribbons, 